Um, but our first speaker is uh, Dr. Tim Blackmore uh, from Infineon on formal verification of the tri-course in Okay, so I'll, I'll briefly describe what we do on, on tri-course. Also for, in, with regards to form verification. So, um, so, so there's maybe four main strands. So the first one is the, um, we, we use, um, we do complete formal verification and, um, using operational properties. So when I say complete, so there's been some talking, talking about, been some discussion on completeness already today. And when I say complete, I'm talking about functionally complete rather than anything to do with structurally complete. And I'll describe what I mean by that and, um, um later. Um, this is typically carried out by verification engineers, um, and typically it will target a complete unit. It will target a unit and completely verify the unit. So it will verify the data path that it um, adheres to a protocol, and um, it will verify any sideband signals such as error signaling. Um, we also do um, formal property checking, and so I contrast these two approaches as well during the um, um, talk. And this is this is a, a more informal approach to formal, formal verification, and this is typically done by designers who don't want to do things like build unit level test benches. Um, we have, um, we have um, over the years, developed a number of scripts to, um, to generate um, large, large groups of properties aimed at doing things like co coverage closure. And these are the sort of things that have sort of now become available um, within formal verification tools. And so we're, we're hoping to be able to um, move from, from supporting these scripts ourselves to, um, to use in the, uh, um, the provided solutions. And, um, and lastly, we do, um, we, we do some stuff with post-silicon debug. So um, we, um, we will um, describe a symptom and, and explore the, um, the conditions that can lead to that symptom and, um, and, and also better characterize what can lead to unexpected behavior um, completely. So I think um, we've been using formal verification tools now for um, a good number of years, and I think probably, um, you know, as as maybe a lot of you know, that once you start using a formal verification tool, you start finding new applications for them. And so there's probably, you know, several other point solutions we've used um, when needed. If there's a difficult problem to solve, people will come and say, can we do this using a formal tool? And often there's something you can do. Okay, so um, I'll begin by describing what I mean by um, this operational-based complete formal verification. So the methodology is developed by OneSpin. It's developed by OneSpin while they were still part of Infineon many years ago. And, um, and it's, it's quite simple. Um, so it's based on, based on these three steps. So first of all, you have a temporal description of each operation. So this temporal description is just in SVA or PSL or whatever property or whatever temporal property language you like. Um, so you might have a temporal description of your read and your write, and your read and write, and your no read or write. So there's, there's your four operations, and you have a temporal description of each of these. And you join these operations end on end by means of a key state. So typically, um, if you're going to verify that a read works correctly in a design, then you'll need your design in a state that it can accept a read or a write, and so on. So, so the first thing you do when you write one of these um, operations is you say, I started my key state. You then describe the operation and you say, and then you, the last thing you do is you, you prove that you also end in your key state. So your design is ready to start your next operation. So in this way, you can just put your operations end on end. So you move from um, verifying um, any single operation so better to put these operations end on end and verify any sequence of operations. And the last thing you need to do is for each operation, you need to prove all relevant outputs, so in all cycles. And so if you put these three, three things together, you have all, all, all your outputs described for all possible sequences of operations, so you have a complete description of output behavior. So this is, this is what I mean by completeness. You have a complete description of the output behavior for the design. And then you, you can run this through your formal tool, or you can run them in simulation. If you run them through your formal tool, then this is what I mean by complete formal verification. All of these operations, your, your design is, is proved, you've proved your, your design um, such, um, executes all these operations correctly. So, um, 
So this is methodology. This isn't tool dependent. You can do this. You can write these operations, and you don't you don't have to run them on the one spin tool. And like I say, you can run them as assertions and simulation. Um, but the one spin tool does um, include a formal completeness check. So it will check for you that your operations are complete. You have a complete description of your behavior. And so it's it's a tool native methodology. Let's say. And as I say, you can also use this methodology to write assertions for simulation. So I've done this in particular for, um, for protocol checkers, for some in-house buses over the last few years. And, um, and, and this is a good way, actually, to develop protocol checkers. It, um, so your protocol is actually being checked in every cycle that you're simulating. The, um, the, the assertions are quick to develop, and, uh, and I'll try to um, explain why um, in, in a while. And, um, and our experience is we, we, find bugs, we find the bugs missed by more traditional protocol checkers, even, even quite mature protocol checkers. So a simple example of how um, this complete, ver complete form of verification might contrast with um, more traditional property checking. So this is a uh, FIFO. So the sort of properties you might um, concentrate on, on a FIFO are things like uh, correct the uh, right pointer increments correctly, the read pointer increments correctly, and there's no overflow or no underflow. So I took these properties from a, from a book um, by, by some industry experts. Now, if you, if you, instead of doing this, if you take the operational approach, then you'll, you'll prove each of the operations on the five side and separately. So you'll prove a, a write operation, so you prove that you can write data into the FIFO correctly, and that the right pointer increments, and it stores if necessary, but you also prove that all the FIFO entries are maintained. They're correctly maintained over time. So you do the same for the read, you do the same for simultaneous read and write or no read and write. So essentially, you've, the, the thing you gain over the, um, over the properties here is you, you've proved the data facts. You've shown the data um, moves through the FIFO correctly. OK. So now I'll, I'll move on to uh, another example. So this is, um, this is, you know, this is write insertions for, for a bus protocol, let's say. So you have a, a description of a bus protocol in your, um, in your specification. So you have your address phase signals described for a read and your data phase signals described for a read, similarly for a write and a read and write. And then you start, it, it was, so with a traditional proxy checking approach, you might start writing properties. You'll read through your specification, and you, you'll start to extract um, properties from the specification. So you might have that your uh, your address must be aligned to your to the size of your transaction. That your data has to be held constant for a write. That um, I don't know. <laughs> that is <laughs> okay. Um, now the pipeline transaction must be held stable once driven and you must have an act eventually or something. So you'll go through your, your specification, you'll extract these properties, and then you'll think, hmm, do I have all my properties? Are, are there more properties? And you'll go through the specification again, maybe, and come up with some more, and, and maybe again, and some more. And, and in this way, you, um, you, you, you write a set of properties. And then finally, you, you've had enough of reading your specification, and you think, yeah, that's, that, that, feels, that feels complete to me. So you end up with something that uh, Mondrian might be proud of. <laughs> nice, uh, nice, bit of ne uh, nice piece of neoplasticism. OK. <laughs> but, um, but, but what you don't know is if, if you've got any gaps. You don't know for sure you don't have any gaps. And you, you don't even know you've created this, this wonderful work of art because you don't have this view of the world. So, so it, but, but you can end up with gaps. And, and our experience is you do end up with gaps because, because we do find bugs missed by the, these sort of protocol checkers. So now I contrast this with what, what you might do if you were going to write um, these more operational assertions. So now, now you take a, sig a, a single signal in your, in your protocol and, and you go through the specification looking for occurrences of that signal and then you you describe how that signal behaves throughout the operation. So you, for your, um, your your address signal, let's say, your, your address has to be aligned to the opcode while the read is driven. Then it has to be held constant 
um, during the rest of the address phase or something like this. And you'll do this for all the signals in your um, in your uh, um, in your bus on your bus, uh, the address phase signals and the data phase signals, and then you, you just you're just building up this picture. And and it, it's it's really quite simple to do this. And so this this is this is the painting by numbers. This is this is what you do. You just do this, and it's 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 reasonably quick. It's it's, it's reasonably quick because um, you're looking at it, looking at signal by signal rather than trying to understand the whole protocol um, as as one. And you and you don't end up with gaps. And because you wanted to do all the operations, you also spot that there's no description of the no op in the spec. So so you think, well, what do I do for no op? Okay, so the address phase signal should be driven um, constant for to optimize power or, or some such. And um, and so so this is included in the spec. You write your properties for it, and you see that you don't have any um, spurious data phases, for instance. So here, so here, 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 this is so this is a complete set of assertions. Okay, so just um, some to so to conclude, some sort of final um, observations on our experience of um, using this methodology. So, um, so this me this methodology could be used to verify a complete CPU, and it, and it has been in the past. There's a, there's a paper on it um, presented um, a number of years ago now at DVCon, and, um, and so it's, it's possible to fully verify a, a CPU, um, but it's, it takes quite a lot of effort and quite a lot of expertise to do that. So typically, um, typically what we do is we we'll look for good return for effort. So, there's, so we'll identify um, identify blocks with higher potential for killer bugs. So the sort of blocks we look at are the fetch blocks and memory interfaces, the cache controllers, and we'll, we'll fully formally verify these blocks. There's also um, some very low effort blocks, so, um, so blocks with very little state in, for instance, um, are very, very easy, or well, can be very easy to verify. So if you have ECC blocks, for instance, you can, you can verify these very quickly. I mean, our, our, our experience is very good with respect to outcome. So it does what it's meant to do. It, it, it doesn't miss any bugs. It finds all the bugs. It doesn't miss any bugs, and and also it can be um, it can be used very efficiently to give feedback to designers. So deltas in a design can be verified very quickly, more quickly than a run in regression, perhaps. Um, it does um, it, so. It does require a certain level of expertise to apply. So typically, um, you can maybe train somebody, over, you, you can support someone in the verification of a unit, and, and by the end of that verification process, they, they will be um, able to go off and do a formal verification by themselves. And in our team of 12, I said around 40% of them have applied this methodology successfully and, and could again. Um, it's an, it, um, in reality, um, it can be a relatively heavyweight approach to formal verification. So when we when we um, estimate efforts for this kind of activity, we typically um, say the effort matches the design effort. And this this will reduce with experience. Um, and and there are some obvious exceptions, as I've already mentioned, such as the um, ECC encoder decoders. Okay, that was it. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Those people have seen a lot of that in a couple of good questions. <laughs> um, <so> the question <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm I'm quite impressed with what you shared with us. Uh, the operation stuff, is this some sort of pseudo language you have developed or uh, one spin gave you? I mean how do you express your operations at the end of You just use normal temporal languages. You can express them at SCA, okay. PSL. So you just use them if there's nothing which you you have, yeah, you have, yeah. Okay. How do you, uh, you know, your comment on the last part one slide about it has really misses bugs. Yeah. How do you know that you haven't missed a bug? Well, let's say no, nothing else finds bugs uh, after it's been okay. formally verified. Okay. So it's never been found later in silicon and they've never been discovered in software. Okay. So you haven't found anything coming back after you implemented this. Is that what you suggest? I'm saying typically, yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's always a get out call. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's on the record. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, there was a question. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, there is a methodology uh, in one screen, because I'm their engineer, of course. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so uh, we have a language dedicated where you can apply this methodology, and uh, there is no possibility for bugs to be left. Because the tool pushes you to go all the way to the end and um, <coughs> define all the behaviors. So, yeah. So, so uh, if there are bugs, then it typically comes down to um, not properly understanding the environment of the um, of the design okay. of the of the unit being verified. Two and four between. Yes, <laughs> 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 maybe it will. <laughs> it's the, the verif you, 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 Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, you, you mentioned right at the start that you've used formal for doing a bit of post silicon debug. Yes, uh, and that's something that, that I've done. I've done at ST, but not with form. And I was just interested in whether or not you could briefly expand on the methodology that you you apply to do that. So you get multi silicon part back, and you go, oh, I've no idea what's wrong with it. Yeah. So, um, well, what, what, okay. What, what do you do? So, yeah, well, so, so you have to have um, you have to, so you have to have some idea of what the what the symptom is. So if, yeah, if you just for failure on silicon, no, you, that's that's not so useful. You have to you have to narrow it down a bit more than that. Yeah, I think Julius going to talk on this. James James calling Julius, so just to, yeah. along the corner. The, make, make, the on that, I think so. she probably knows better than I do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but there is, a, there is a paper on this topic. Paper, so. okay. Oh, you probably should go and see your colleague. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a twenty hours down the corridor, yeah. <laughs> Okay. My understanding is that you have applied this methodology for testing individual units of the thing. Yes. Uh, have you tried the extending this to composing multiple units and then maybe lifting it to instruction level if your operations are instructions? Yeah, yeah. So, so there is a paper on this. Yeah. This, this, I mean, yeah. This, this paper describes how you might do this. Okay. The complexity will be much bigger and you know, I would be, yeah, so I'll, I'll take it offline so we want to see how you manage the complexity. You have to break it down into manageable chunks okay. and then and then show the chunks fit together properly, yeah. I think there's, uh, there's, there's three questions, first of all, yeah, just coming back to this, you obviously you describe a protocol there. Um, when it comes down to that, presumably it's quite straightforward once you get understand the technique. When it comes to actually actually getting uh, proofs, uh, do you still have to apply other techniques, presumably like abstraction and variance, or is there is there some methodology within this to apply this when determining within a block? Or? Um, so yeah, so so I mean this 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 is why it tends to be quite a heavyweight approach. So so we're, we're, yeah, so the, so the methodology is simple, but the application of it isn't always. You, you come across problems, you have to deal with them. So, so for instance, invariance. Yeah. So, so um, a nice thing about this is your operations are banded. So you only have to describe behavior of a, a, fixed, a, a, a fixed number of cycles. Um, but, but because because of that, you you might have to um, do some reachable state stuff to begin. You, you might have to prove some invariance to to show what your reachable states are at the beginning of that. So you can get very you can, you can get very um, quick proof times because you're using um, a banded property, um, but that might need some user assistance. But, but there is, uh, yeah, you can also prove these. I mean, these operations can be proved an arbitrary number of segment, um, cycles from reset, um, also, and, and and that can work. But you might you might have to wait an hour for a property to prove, and you might not want to do that. So you, so then you revert to invariance. When you say heavyweight efforts to design and you know, design to verify the design, are you you comparing that against Designs that have been had a lot of work done by designers to verify them, and then taking them forward. So a complete solution to verify in the same amount of effort as a detective design it doesn't seem very heavyweight to me. So um, no, so you would end up with a you would end up with a very good quality block um, if you if you used yeah with, with, yeah splitting the effort fifty fifty and and you can yeah, and you can start early and. Um, I, 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 because 
design is probably designing uh, operations, and I start with simple operations and then add more complex operations. And you, you can do the same. You can describe your simple operations first, and then describe your more complex operations. So it's well suited to starting early on the design and, and delivering a very high quality design into your simulation environment. Now, whether you want to, you probably want to do some simulation. So the last question from Chris. Or I uh, didn't want to qualify that 40% figure. I'm going to assume that 60% didn't fail. Uh, <laughs> didn't fail to, to learn it. Yeah, yeah. No, so is, right. is the barrier the methodology or the expertise in the system? Um, no. Uh, the, um, I, I don't think there is a barrier. When I, when I say, like you say, it, it, it isn't that 60% failed. It's just that 60% haven't, haven't, haven't tried it yet. Um, but um, yeah, so that, that, I mean, the methodology is conceptually simple, but there can be difficulties in applying. Okay, well, that's very really uh, slightly over. But thanks, Tim. Very interesting. Thank you.